Hi, my name is Ivan Skrachodov and in this video I would like to present you 3D generation on ImageNet, our recent work on 3D synthesis, which we did together with Alexander Sarohin, In Hao Xu, Jian Ren, Xin Yin Li, Peter Wonka and Sergei Tulikov. So, what is 3D aware image synthesis? Imagine that you have a dataset of RGB images, for example images of faces. Then you want to train such a generator which would learn to synthesize 3D objects. There are two big problems with modern 3D generators. First, they are designed for well-curated aligned datasets, where all the objects have similar scale, zoom, position and global geometry. Next, they use overly simplistic assumptions about the camera pose distribution, and this makes them inapplicable to modern large-scale in-the-wild datasets like ImageNet. To enable 3D synthesis on complex in the well datasets, we develop three techniques. First, we propose to supervise the generator with an off the shelf monocular depth estimator. Next, we develop a more flexible camera model with a learnable distribution over its parameters. Finally, we design a simple and cheap technique of distilling the knowledge from a pre trained feature extractor into the discriminator. In the next slides, we'll discuss these techniques in detail. We build our work on top of a epigraph, which has the following pipeline. First, we sample a noise vector. Then, we pass it to a 2D convolutional generator to produce triplanes, which is similar to the EG3D framework. After that, we sample camera parameters. Next, triplanes and the camera parameters are passed into the volumetric rendering procedure together with lightweight MLP decoder to render the image. This image is then passed to the discriminator and classified as real or fake. Real images are passed to the discriminator directly. Rendering the full image from the generator is expensive, that's why we use multi-scale patch by straining to render the crops of random scale and offsets. The key ingredient of our work is adversarial depth supervision. The main idea is to render from the dry planes not only the RGB colors, but also the depth maps. Note that rendering depth maps adds almost zero computational overhead. RGB and depth are then concatenated to form a four channels input, and then passed to the discriminator. For the real images, we use LRES, a powerful off-the-shelf monocular depth estimator. It should be noted that we estimate the depth maps for real images at the pre-processing stage before the training starts, so using a powerful depth estimator adds zero overhead during training. But using such a pipeline as it is could be problematic, since the Lerys depth estimator is not perfect. First, it returns relative depth, which makes the real shapes of the object skewed when one relies exclusively on the depth maps. Second, LRS has some prediction imperfections. Take this image as an example. It has the following estimated depth map by LRS. On this image, one can notice that the left eye of the dog is incorrectly further away from its right eye and the noise bridge. Next, the legs of the human far away are predicted to be closer to the camera than the dog's tail. This all motivates us to develop the following component. We add to our original architecture a depth adapter. This adapter is a lightweight 2D convolutional block, which processes the rendered depth maps and makes them closer in distribution to the ones predicted by the depth estimator. When properly regularized, it still propagates good learning signal to the generator to learn the geometry, without forcing it to model all these depth artifacts, as the discriminator would demand to do. In practice, one can get reasonable results on a simple dataset without the depth adapter, like here on docs. But adding the depth adapter can improve the image quality without hurting the geometry. We regularize it by adapting the render depth maps only with some probability. For the best results, one need to adapt the render depth maps from 50 to 90% of the time, depending on the da dataset difficulty. If one adapts the render depth maps all the time, then it prevents the generator to learn any 3D, 
since it would delegate all the work on capturing the geometry to the depth adapter. In practice, we found that the depth adapter is essential for ImageNet, and all our training experiments diverged without it, because it was too difficult for the generator to model all the depth estimator prediction artifacts in the volumetric representation. Another issue with the in the wild datasets is that they have very high variability in the camera parameters. Currently, two popular benchmarks for 3D synthesis are FFHQ and CATS. These datasets are well curated and aligned. First, objects are of the same scale and are almost always fully visible without any occlusions or cuts. Next, the camera distance is always the same. Finally, camera always points to the center of the scene. In contrast for ImageNet, we have some objects which are very far away, other objects are very close by, and the camera might focus not only on the full object, but some of its parts, like the head. In this way, not the whole object is visible. That's why we develop a more flexible camera parameterization. Current 3D generators use a very simplistic camera model with just two degrees of freedom, which specify the rotation and the elevation of the camera origin. We propose a more flexible ball and sphere camera model. It also locates two degrees of freedom for the camera position and elevation. And similarly, the camera is located on a sphere of a fixed radius. But additionally, we also use a variable field of view. In this way, we get the partial control of the camera intrinsics, and this allows to fit the images of different zoom. And apart from that, we allocate three degrees of freedom for modeling the look at point, which is located in a small ball inside the bounding sphere. Control over the look at position is needed to let the generator focus on some parts of an object, like a dog's head or a cup in a table. Due to the camera flexibility, one cannot arrange a reasonable prior distribution over its parameters. That's why we set up an additional MLP network to predict them from a noise vector and the class embed. Next, we develop a very general technique for improved GAN training by incorporating external knowledge into the GAN model. Recently, there appeared several works which explore knowledge transfer into GANs through initialization. They work by simply taking a pre-trained encoder like ResNet or BIT and setting it up as the main discriminator component. Then you freeze this component and initialize a lightweight discriminator's head on top of it. This approach is simple but comes with two issues. First, it restricts the overall discriminator's architecture. For example, if you want to use patchwise training or pass depth maps as an additional input channel, then you cannot use it easily. Next, for some reason it was the version for us for StyleGen2. In our work, we propose to do knowledge transfer through knowledge distillation and find it to work considerably better. In our strategy, the discriminator is trained to perform two tasks. First, it learns to classify the images on real and fake. But besides that, we compute the embeddance from a pre-trained encoder for each real image. This is done once at the dataset preprocessing stage and does not involve any additional computational overhead. Then, we set up an additional lightweight embedding prediction head in the discriminator and train it to predict the embeddings from the encoder. This strategy is very cheap and doesn't restrict the discriminator's architecture. You can use it on top of a patchwise discriminator or a discriminator with four input channels instead of three, like in our case. Also, we found it to work well for StyleGen2. Here are the convergence plots for StyleGen2 on ImageNet128 for different methods. You can see that adding our simple knowledge distillation drastically improves the convergence speed, and it has just 1% computational overhead, which is negligible. Combining all the discussed techniques allowed us to build 3DGP, a 3D generator with generic priors, which was able to do 3D synthesis on ImageNet for the first time. Here are the samples from our method. You can see that 3DGP was able to capture the geometry of many difficult ImageNet categories. And here is the comparison with the contemporary 3D generators. EG3D produces flat or repetitive geometry. Epigraph diverges into a completely flat geometry. 
but 3DGP is able to generate reasonably looking shapes. And here is the comparison of the learned surfaces which we extracted with Martian cubes. EG3D with the default camera distribution from FFHQ learns completely flat shapes. If you widen its camera distribution, sampling camera poses from higher rotation and elevation angles, then it starts capturing some 3D but via repetitive surfaces. Our method, in contrast, is able to capture 3D without the wide camera pose distribution and can model high fidelity details like separate hair strands or folds on the clothes. The power of the guidance by an off-the-shelf depth estimator is especially prominent on those categories which were a part of its training domain, like this store. One can see that our generator was able to separate the shelves or even the goods on the shelves in this scene. In terms of the raw metrics, while our generator is computationally more expensive than the contemporary 3D ones, it noticeably improves in terms of the scores. Compared to 2D generators, 3D generators are still far behind in terms of visual quality, but the community has not yet tried spending a comparable amount of compute resources to train them. Our work is the first one to explore the challenging task of 3D synthesis on ImageNet and comes with several limitations. First, we have the problem of background sticking and cannot do 360 degrees generation. Next, for some categories we still have flat or skewed geometry. Overall, the raw visual quality of 3D generators is still far behind the visual quality of modern 2D generators, but note that in our case we used dramatically less compute. Also, our camera generator worked well on synthetic datasets, but for real ones it struggles to learn fine-grained camera control. Finally, on ImageNet we regularly suffer from the notorious GAN mod collapse and have low intracategory diversity. Thank you for watching. You can find the additional information on our project website.